Hello, hello, welcome. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit today about um, some game math, and specifically we're going to talk about how to use vectors and how to navigate in three-dimensional space using vectors. And this is something that's just incredibly useful um, for game design, like that, especially if you're using a 3D engine like, uh, like Unreal Engine or Unity 3D. It's just so powerful. And it, seem, it might seem like this is going to be like a sort of number heavy thing, but really it's not that bad because the, the game engine at the end of the day is going to take care of all of the number crunching for you. You just need to know the big picture idea. You need to know what the different things are and how to... This is we're very familiar with. There are other ones, but that's completely outside of what we're doing. We don't use that for game engines. Uh, so if you have an x and y coordinate, you can define a point like p1. This is p1, and its x coordinate is x1, its y coordinate is y1. Then we can make another point, p2, which has an x coordinate of x1 and a y coordinate of y2. Uh, sorry, uh, p2 has x2 and y2 for its coordinates. And then we can draw a line between p1 and p2, and that line can follow the math formula y equals mx plus b, which is something that we've all learned in school or high school or wherever you did it. Um, but y is basically in y for a given x. So y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope. And the slope of a line is equal to the change in y divided by the change in x. So uh, m for this line would be y2 minus y1, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And that's how you get the slope, and that's nice. So with that formula, for any given x value, you can tell me the y value that would fall on this line. So if I told you x is 3, you could plug in chug and you say maybe that the y value on the line is 5. Um, and it's a nice formula. I'm sure you can find many uses to do it inside game development and otherwise. Um, but if I wanted to know the x and y coordinate of a point that was 3 units away from p1 in the direction of p2, like... If I wanted to know, moving along the line for three units, this point right here, what are the x and y coordinates such that we're three units away p1 moving towards p2? That's a very difficult thing to do with y equals mx plus b. Just out the gate, it's not that simple. Um, and then if you want to go into 3D coordinates, it's even harder using uh, these mathematical equations, y equals mx plus b. So this is where vectors come in, because what's very difficult to solve algebraically is something that's very simple to do with vectors. Um, so this is an information-rich slide, but we're just going to take it one step at a time. So if you have the point P1, um, the vector that goes from the origin, 0, 0, to P1, is written like this. We would call it E for vector, and then we use angle brackets to show that we're talking about a vector, and its x-coordinate is x1, and its y-coordinate is y1. So x1, y1, and it points at P1. Similarly, the vector V2 uh, starts at the origin and points at P2, which has an x-coordinate of x2 and a y-coordinate of y2. Um, so now that we know what a vector is, a vector is basically just x and y coordinates between an angle bracket, we might want to know things like, what does it mean to add two vectors? Like, what is v1 plus v2, you know? And one of the first things you might think of is like, oh, let's just add the x's and add the y's. Like, and you'd be exactly correct if that's what you thought. So v1 plus v2 is a new vector, and its x-coordinate is the addition of the x's. So x1 plus x2, and then y1 plus y2. Very simple. Now, if I said, what is vector subtraction, your initial estimate would probably be, let's just subtract the coordinates, and that would be 100% right as well. So v2 minus v1 is equal to x2 minus x1 for the x value, and then the y value would be y2 minus y1. And if you see over here in red, I said, that's actually equal to v3, and I said gasp. So if we look back over here, I drew a third vector. The vector pointing, uh, starting at p1 and pointing to p2, is actually just v2 minus v1, and this is something you can refer back to this, but basically, if you want to create a vector between two points in space, you just subtract the points. So x2 minus x1 is the x-coordinate for this uh, vector, and then y2 minus y1 is the y-coordinate. Um, so definitely remember that. To make a vector between two points in space, you subtract the points. It's very, very simple. So now that we have addition and subtraction, the next thing you would want to talk about is probably multiplication. And this is where things get a little weird because you can multiply a vector by a scalar. And if you're not familiar, a scalar is just a fancy name for any single number. It's not a vector. A vector has x and y. A scalar is just a number like 1, 2, 3.5, 0 0.26, 3.1415, you name it. Those are all scalars. So what you might think to do 
is uh, to just straight up add, uh, multiply a scalar times all of the things, all of the uh, coordinates, x, y, and z, or whatever. And you'd be exactly right. So 0.5 times the vector v1, you just multiply 0.5 times the x value, and then 0.5 times the y value, etc. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, I guess I should finish this there. Uh, I'll just wrap up. Um, so the, the next question is, what about a vector times a vector? And that's where things get weird, because there's multiple ways to do it. They do different things. They have different uses. And I think we'll definitely make a video about that next time, because um, in game design, it's super useful to know how to use the different types of vector multiplication. But um, for right now, we're going to skip it. We're going to move on because it doesn't help us right now. Um, so moving on. Um, the next question you might want to ask is, how long is a vector? And that's actually called the magnitude. So if you would like to know the length of this vector in its direction towards P1, uh, actually, this is a better picture. So we want to know the length of the vector. And if you're looking here, you might think, oh, yeah, that's actually just a nice little triangle, which brings us to the other part of math that we learned back in middle school or high school called Pythagorean theorem. And that was just an equation for us to figure out the length of the hypotenuse of a triangle given its two sides. Um, and it has a very simple equation. C, the hypotenuse, is equal to, or C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, which we can square root both sides of this equation. Let me get that pointer. We can square root both sides of this equation to get C equals the square root of A squared plus B squared. And that is exactly what the magnitude is. This right here is how we denote a magnitude. It's the vector inside of these two absolute value ones. So it's a two vertical lines with the vector inside of it. And that reads as the magnitude of vector v1. <clears throat> and it's equal to the square root of the x coordinate plus the y coordinate squared. Both of them squared. So the vector, the magnitude of vector v1 is equal to the square root of x1 squared plus y1 squared. Um, and keep in mind that that's a scalar. It, the, the magnitude of a vector is not a vector. The magnitude vector number we're trying to we're trying to answer the question how large is this vector how long is this vector and that's just a number it doesn't have x and y coordinates it's just a number um moving on um one that's a special vector we call that a unit vector so whenever you hear the term unit vector it's mean it means that its length is equal to one and that's they become very useful as you'll see in the next couple minutes but uh, it's very nice to calculate a unit vector because a, a unit vector is basically just direct. So if you have a vector v1 and it has a larger length, maybe maybe v1 has a length of 10, meaning a magnitude of 10, what we want to know the unit vector pointing in the same direction. So this red vector v1, uh, v1 with the caret symbol on top or the hat symbol, whatever you want to call it, that's how we denote a unit vector. Uh, this red vector is pointing in the same direction as v1, but it only has a length of 1. Okay, and we can calculate that. And if you're already onto something, um, you might have guessed that the, the unit vector v1 hat is just the vector divided by its magnitude. So if you have a vector v1 whose magnitude is 10 and you divide v1 by 10, you magically now have a vector pointing in the same direction but with a length of 1. Um, and so you can see here that I wrote out the formula a little more clearly. Uh, v1 hat, the unit vector v1, has an x-coordinate of the x-coordinate, x1, divided by the magnitude, which is just the square root of x squared plus y squared. And then for y coordinate, which is y, which is x plus b, the square root of x squared plus y squared. Um, remember, the unit vector is just the direction of the vector squared. So with that, let's hop into the answer that's answer the question by asking the question in the next equation. So if we have two points, p1 and p2, what point, p3, is three units away from p1 in the direction of p2? Um, so the first thing to note is that this is a vector v, a red vector, um, that is in the red line that we drew. We don't care about its length. We know the vector is between two points. You just subtract the two points. Uh, so p2 minus p1 gets us our vector v, which is 10 minus 2 for the x, and then 7 minus 1 for the y. And that gets us the vector 3.6. Now we can figure out what the, um, what the magnitude of the vector v is, and that's the square root of the x coordinate squared plus the y coordinate squared. So the square root a squared plus 6 squared is the square root of 64 plus 36, which is the square root of 100, which is 10. Nice and easy. And let me back out so that I can put it on that line. Um, so then the unit vector of vector v is the vector that points in the direction of p1 and p2, but only has a length of 1. And instead, it has the vector v divided by its magnitude. So 8 over 10 divided by, uh, for the x value. So the x value is 8 over 10, and then the y value is 6 over 10. Subtract 8 and 6. Now we have 
say that in Python. Um, so point two three now starts at point two three h. So we're moving away in the direction of our utilization path. So what we said here is that p three is equal to p one plus b hat for the b interval times three h. So if you can picture that, p one you start at p one, p one plus now it's moving from p one in the direction of our unit vector times three. So that would take our unit vector, which is just one, and we scale the unit vector up so that it's three times one, which is three units, and it would move us right here at point three. So if we look at how that math works out, you might have to pause and make sure you can wrap your head around this, but P1 is point two x and y1. So two for the x and y of one, and then times the unit vector, which is point eight, point six times three. So the unit vector times three is point eight for the x value times three, and then the y value is 0.6 times 3, which is um, which is the v hat times 3 for the y value, 0.6 times 3 plus 1, which is our 1 right here. Um, and if this didn't make perfect sense, we have an example a little bit later that shows the math a little bit more clearly spaced out. But really, the takeaway is the idea of how you set up this equation, not so much that you can crunch the numbers. Because like I said before, our game engine is going to crunch the numbers for us. We don't have to do this stuff by hand. But just this is what you do need to know. You need to know that P3 is equal to P1 plus V hat, which is our unit vector times three. So if you have to rewatch it a, a couple times and figure out why that is the way, um, do so. But we're also gonna uh, move on from here. And so now I take a moment, mentally prepare yourself because we're gonna make the jump from 2D to 3D. Um, so pause the video if you need to, but um, here's the kicker. It's exactly the same. Nothing changes. It's so easy to make the transition from 2D to 3D. <clears throat> so I'm going to jump right into an example because we don't need to learn anything else. It's exactly the same, except now instead of just X and Y, we have a third coordinate, Z. So all the points now have three coordinates. So we have a point P1 and we have a point P2. Uh, P1 is 1, 2, 3. P2 is 4, 3, 6. So that means it's uh, four units in the X, three units in the Y, and six units in the Z. Uh, I wouldn't take out a ruler and try to scale all this because I guarantee you I did not draw it to scale. But we want to answer the same question. We want to know what is the point P3, X, Y, and Z coordinates that is three units away from P1 moving towards P2. Now I'm going to jump back. Uh, let me get my pointer. The first thing that we're going to want to do is find the vector V, which goes from P1 to P2. And like I said before, when you want to get a vector between any two points in space, all you have to do is subtract them. So the vector v is going to be p2 minus p1, and that's simply going to be the subtraction here. So the x value is going to be 4 minus 1, the y value is going to be 3 minus 2, and the z value is going to be 6 minus 3, which you can see here. And that gets us the vector 3, 1, 3. Um, the next thing we're going to need, the same way as the two-dimensional problem, we're going to need the magnitude of the vector v. And when you have a z-axis, all you have to do is tack on an extra z squared in here. So the magnitude of the vector is going to be uh, the square root of the x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So the square root of 3 squared plus 1 squared plus 3 squared, which is the square root of 19, which is 4.36. Then the unit vector, um, which is this blue vector here, which points in the direction of p1 to p2, but it only has a length of 1, is just the original vector divided by its magnitude. So 3 divided by 4.36, 1 divided by 4.36, and 3 divided by 4.36. And when you crunch that into your calculator, you get the answer that is the x value is 0 0.69, the y value is 0 0.23, and then the z value is 0 0.69. Um, <clears throat> so from there, we can go in to answer our original problem with what is point three in X, Y, and Z. That is three units away from P1 in the direction of P2. And that is just like before, it's going to be P3 equals P1 plus the V, the v hat, the unit vector times three. And now, uh, if we look back at our uh, original thing, our P1 is 1, 2, 3, right here, plus 3 times our unit vector. So 3 times our unit vector, we just go in and we multiply all of our x, y, and z by 3. So 3 times 0.69, 2.07, 3 times 0 0.23, 0 0.69, and 3 times 0 0.69 is 2.07.
Then the last step is to add P1 to this value. And all we have to do to do that is add our X with our X, our Y with our Y, and our Z with our Z. So 1 plus 2.07 is 3.07, 2 plus 0.69 is 2.69, and 3 plus 2.07 is 5.07. So that is the X, Y, and Z coordinates of our point P3 that is three units away in the direction of P1 to P2. Okay, that's it for the math. Check out part two where we dive into an example in Unreal Engine.